Dame Meg Hillier, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, first of all, is this a particular surprise? We've heard about the housing crisis for a long time. We know that these targets are being missed. What's new in this report? Well, we have been looking at this actually as a committee, um, and I know our sister committee has as well, and others. Uh, we've been looking at it for over seven years, but we have now you know, bottomed out the figures on the affordable housing programme, as you highlight, and that's set to be at least 32,000 short, with the cost of inflation and construction costs going up uh, even more. But one of our concerns is, in this report particularly highlighted, is that there are, even within that affordable homes program, there have not been specific targets for different types of tenure, because affordable can be a shared ownership, affordable rent, which is 80% of private rents, or social rented housing. All of those are important, but there aren't targets for delivering on those. So, you know, we could have it all shared ownership, which wouldn't help the many people who really, really need a socially rented home because they couldn't possibly afford any other option. Who's to blame when it comes to the lack of these affordable homes being constructed? Is it the, the central government or uh, ultimately is it down to local governments who haven't been submitting their local plans to the government, who haven't been fulfilling the targets that have been set by central government? Well, look, it's a bit of plague on all their houses, really. Not in every case. There are obviously some very good local authorities doing some excellent work. But it's true that there are councils that are reluctant uh, to see homes built. We know that. That's partly why there's been a Conservative Party rebellion on this issue. But there is also, we're saying to the government centrally, you need to keep a proper track of the numbers and you need to have a bit more of an aspiration on socially rented homes. Because if you look at, we've also highlighted that you can save money by doing this properly. Uh, for, so, for example, if you can't get a socially rented home now, councils house you in the private rented sector often on a five-year tenancy. That's taking something out of the private rented sector for someone who might need it in that sector. And prices, as we know, are going up for private renters. So generation rent is being squeezed. And many of them need to buy their own homes. So in parts of the country, starter homes might be what's needed. What we really need is a mature conversation between local and national government. But what we see is sort of this screaming warfare, which isn't delivering homes for the people who desperately need them. Ultimately, the need for affordable homes, the need for socially rented homes and, and the rest of it uh, is a function of how disjointed our housing market as a whole is. If we had more house building in the private sector, we would probably have less need for that socially rented uh, sector as it stands. Uh, is there a risk that we're focusing too much here on the, uh, on the affordable homes side of things when actually the problem is a bit larger and more homes would be more affordable if we simply built more? Well, no, well, the government has set a target for affordable homes, so it was that we were measuring them on their own ambitions. And we don't, as a committee, take a policy position on this. But what is clear is that in some areas, uh, you, know, you can build as many homes as you want, but you wouldn't be able to afford it. So, OK, I'm in inner London, which is a particularly extreme example, but it's £750,000 now for a new build two-bedroom flat. Now, you know, you tell me who could afford that starting out as a starter home. It's not a starter home. So uh, people on quite, quite good jobs just cannot afford to rent privately or buy their own home. Even if you supplied a lot more, some overheated areas of the country, we're not going to see such a radical reduction in prices that it would be possible. So we still need that core of socially rented housing. And we've crucially said to the department, measure the best, the benefits of this. You say yourselves, it's the cost benefit of this is one of the highest ratios. If you don't have the right social housing available, people end up being pushed into the private rented sector. They end up claiming more on housing benefit and all of the other challenges and costs that, that come from not having a stable home. So actually, this is an investment that saves the taxpayer money.